Good morning, everybody, and thanks so much for joining us for today's webinar. Today we're going to be discussing how you can write job postings that are going to attract qualified candidates. So I'm sure that most of you on the call don't have any problem with, with attracting a large quantity of candidates. Um, you know, I think the statistic is that most job postings get about 250 resumes, um, sometimes just on the first day alone. Um, but what we're talking about here is getting those quality candidates um, that you know, are going to make it to the top of your shortlist, the ones that you want to interview for the position. Um, so we're going to be talking about how you can write the job postings that attract those quality can qualified candidates. Um, so the thing is that the job seekers today, the top job seekers in the market, have a choice in where they work. So they are being really particular about where they apply and where they interview and where they spend their time. And this is more true than ever about those passive candidates, those coveted passive candidates. Um, they have a choice in where they work. They don't necessarily have a lot of time or care to spend a lot of time weeding through jobs that they're honestly not very interested in. Um, so the job postings are really a crucial part of your overall recruitment process that help you stand out as an employer of choice. So that's what we'll be talking about today is how you can put yourself in the shoes of these top candidates and learn how you can you know, best make your jobs look appealing to them. So I'm Jen Picard and I'm in charge of the recruiter marketing here at Bright. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I'm available via email um, and social networks, so feel free in any way that you feel most comfortable. If you have any questions, feel free to shout them out during the webinar. Um, you are being muted, but you can reach out to me directly and I will answer all questions at the end. Um, Bright.com is a, is a pretty new site we launched just a couple of months ago, and we eliminate the noise in the hiring process by efficiently connecting job seekers to their best opportunities. And then we help connect employers to their top prospects. So we use artificial intelligence to identify and establish kind of a one-to-one -one signal between candidates and successful outcomes. So we're not just an innovation in online job search, we're really looking to move the labor markets a lot faster. So like I said, today we're going to discuss what job seekers are looking for, what those top candidates want, and we're going to give you some tips to appeal to the best candidates with a well-written job post. So specifically, we're going to discuss how to craft a great job title, how to get your top candidates excited about applying for your company. Um, the best way is to show the required skills and qualifications for your positions, and then also how to insert some of the you know, more standard but boring stuff like your location, your compensation information, and then how we can get people to apply. And then at the end, we're going to show you how you can do all of this for free on Bright.com. So the, whole, the key takeaway for this whole webinar, spoiler alert, right, um, is that top job seekers think a little bit differently than the unqualified candidates you're probably used to getting. They know they're in demand. They know that they have their choice of employer. And the key takeaway I want everybody to learn today is that you really want to make it easy for these job seekers to decide to apply to your company. I know this might sound counterproductive to some people. Um, you know, you might be getting more resumes. Um, but the, the reality of the matter is that if you write a well-written job posting, you should be able to cut down on the unqualified candidates and get a lot more of those qualified top prospects that you're looking for. So we'll get started by talking about job titles. Um, you know, a lot of a big trend lately I've seen for companies is to use some really creative job titles. So we're seeing here rock star, ninja, guru. Um, people are looking for an engineering wizard or a marketing guru. Um, and these are really fun. Um, I think the reason why they've been so trendy is it kind of shows that the company is fun. It gives a taste of your culture. Um, it shows that you don't take your job titles as seriously as you perhaps um, take teamwork as seriously. So all of those things are really great. Um, they are, but what they're kind of probably tr costing you qualified candidates for two main reasons. Um, the one main reason is that qualified candidates are less likely to spend their time perusing through all of the engineering or all of the marketing jobs or whatever their field is. Um, they're not going to peruse through all of the jobs they can find. 
Instead, what they'll be doing is running targeted searches for positions, and they're going to be using standard job titles. So for example, a marketing director will be searching for marketing director. And if you put it up as a marketing guru, that position likely won't even be found by that top job seeker. Um, the second reason that that um, is kind of an issue is that qualified candidates are also going to be scanning titles for relevant positions. So when they do find, you know, when they do their search and they come up with a list of positions that, you know, they might choose to look through the job postings for, they're going to be skipping all of the titles that they don't understand. So if I'm looking for a marketing director position, I'm not going to be really interested in checking out the marketing rock star position because I don't know if that's junior or senior level. I don't know if it has to do with B2B or B2C. You know, it, just, it doesn't sound like something that is a good fit for me just because, you know, it's not the title that I've searched for. So, you know, if you do show up in the search results, it's still you might not get those qualified candidates to even check out your job posting. So a couple quick tips to ensure that your job titles don't cost you qualified candidates. First and foremost, and I think this is going to be a recurring theme throughout the presentation today, think like a candidate. So think about what your candidates would be searching for online. Try and understand what is searched for and what people are going to understand what it means. So for example, say that you're searching for a sales director rather than an experienced and proven sales professional. Um, you want to stick to the title that people are going to be searching for. You also want to use standard spelling and grammar, so no abbreviations, try not to use too much industry jargon, just keep the title simple. Uh, you also want to be careful not to write job titles in question form. Um, this is going to be a big part of getting people to trust you. So don't say, um, you know, want to work at a well-funded startup, that's not a job title. That's something that you might put in the introductory paragraph, but absolutely not in the title. Um, if you want to get specific candidates, you should use more specific job titles. So that's going to be saying a uh, proposal writer versus a writer, or a B2B marketing professional versus a marketing professional. So if you use some industry specific skills and certifications, you'll get a lot more specific candidate pool. You might not get as many, um, but that's probably okay for a lot of the positions you're hiring for. And you can always test this as well. So you know, try doing a, a posting for a week where you have it really a really specific title, and try doing a posting for a week where maybe you have a less specific title, and see which one gets you the more qualified candidates. Because sometimes you can't always tell what's going to work. Um, another tip is to not post multiple job titles within single postings title field. So if you're hiring for marketing and sales and engineering, you want to make sure that you have separate um, job postings for each of those. So you're not putting that same title, uh, those three titles, in the same job title. Um, you also want to be careful not to enter salary or location in the job title. That's already listed in the posting. Um, I see it quite a bit, but it's really not necessary. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and get into the meat of the posting. So let's talk about formatting really quickly. Once a job seeker has found your job, it's important that your posting provides the information that they need. So you want to make sure that you include information uh, about your culture, your benefits, skills, qualifications, compensation, location, all that good stuff. And you want to provide as much of that as possible in your job posting because if you don't, candidates might pass you over completely. So we'll start by talking about the opening paragraph. And the reason I put this uh, image up here, what's in it for me, because the opening paragraph, a lot of companies like to talk about themselves. They like to say, this is who we are. This is what we do. Um, this is what you can do for us. And the problem is that that sort of um, opening paragraph doesn't really engage your qualified candidates very much. They want to know, why do I want to work for you? Um, you know, the, the more active job seekers, of course, are going to figure that out on their own. But these top candidates who have the choice to work anywhere they want to work kind of want to, you know, they, they kind of want to be, have their hand held a little bit. They want to say, um, they want you to say, hey, do you want to work for a fast growing company? Well, you'll make an immediate impact. We value work-life balance. You want to include things that really make you unique as an employer and that allow you to position yourself as an employer of choice. Um, so in this opening paragraph, make sure that you really spark the interest of your job seeker, you wow them into wanting to read more. 
um, this is a really easy drop off point to lose some of those top candidates. If you're too busy talking about yourself to talk about you know, what's in it for the job seeker. So provide a clear overview of your position. Talk about what's in it for them. Um, most of the top prospects are going to be looking for a position where they can either make an impact, where they can have more challenging work, um, and or where their culture fits their personality. So really give them a taste of what you are going to offer to them. Um, there's really not any sort of right or wrong thing to say here. So long as you're honest about what you offer, show that you're competitive, and position, position yourself as an employer of choice. So this is really your first and your most important chance to impress those top job seekers and make them want to apply for your position. Uh, so we're going to talk about some culture and benefits now. Um, the information that positions you as an employer of choice can be included in that opening section, and it includes both benefits and culture. And uh, as you can kind of see from this comic here, um, this is really true though, that top candidates want it all, and you really can't expect them to settle. Um, if you're not offering them a competitive package, they know they can find it elsewhere, and they're not even going to bother applying to your position. So, and if you want people to apply, you need to show them what is available to them up front, and you want to tell them about the benefits of culture. You have to have a great employer brand. Um, a lot of companies will start with just the basic benefits, which include medical, dental, and retirement savings. And then they'll go ahead and add more benefits as they can afford them. Um, a lot of companies are learning that they can be really competitive in the employment marketplace without offering higher salaries, but instead adding additional benefits. So some of the no-cost options people are starting to include right now are flex schedules and dog-friendly offices. Um, other common benefits include catered lunches, tuition reimbursement, um, extra PTO, comfortable office spaces, things like that. And these are all not just low cost options compared to turnover and hiring costs, but they also help you recruit your top candidates, especially if you're, if you're saying that you include these things in your job postings. So if you offer anything above and beyond your industry standard of compensation and benefits, make sure you mention it in your job posting. Um, if you don't currently offer any of these benefits, it's just a little side note, start with your current employees and find out what's going to make them most happy in their workplace and what's going to make them want to give you more referrals. Um, you know, basically, if, if you don't have a happy workforce, then you're not going to recruit these top candidates either. Um, so although it's unrelated to the job posting aspect, it indirectly has a major impact how your, com how your company's employees think about you. Um, so you want to make sure that you know, when, you, when you put these benefits together and you talk about your culture, um, that it really fits with everybody that currently works there, and that way that your new employees can really jive well with your current ones. Um, in this opening section, you'll also want to provide you know, some information about sign-on advantages, perks, bonuses, um, anything like that that you're also including. So I want to move into the skills and qualifications, which is what I think most people um, think of first when they're doing the job posting, and you know, rightfully so. Um, so with the skills and qualifications section, I think the, the most common mistake that employers make here is creating a huge list of skills. And I think this is a big part of why so many unqualified candidates come through your pipeline, because they see this list of skills. There's you know, 15 or so, and maybe they have 10 out of them. And they assume that nobody is really getting all 15. And this is kind of what the job seeker has been conditioned to do. You know, if I'm even remotely qualified for this job, there's no harm in submitting my resume. Um, you know, what, what, what bad can come out of this? And so that's the mindset that gets recruiters these days having to go through hundreds of resumes for every job posting um, and having to weed out so many people that aren't qualified for the position. Um, because it's really unclear to these job seekers what the, what the must-have skills are. So what are the things that are non-negotiable versus what are just the nice-to-haves? Um, and a lot of the time, these things are mixed up in the list. And it's like, this is nice-to-have, this is desired, this is non-negotiable. Um, and it really help, makes the job seeker do a lot more work in determining if they're a good fit for the position. Um, what really works out the best is if this section gives job seekers first an idea of what a day in the job looks like. So if you lead with a performance-based description, 
It will help the non-qualified job seekers self-select out, and it encourages candidates that are willing to perform those job duties to apply. So for example, uh, a performance-based description would say something like, responsible for obtaining 20% client renewals for sales position, rather than saying two to four years of account management experience. So that way the people that are interested in getting client renewals that know that they have a background in being able to do that and that have been successful in doing that will apply for the position, while those that aren't qualified for that and know that they don't have any experience in that and that you're likely going to ask that in the interview will decide that it's not actually worth their time to apply because they're just not a good fit. So when you communicate the realities of the job that's being listed, and you cover the day-to-day -day responsibilities and then focus on the outcomes that are required, candidates will actually self-select whether their interests align with the job, which not only helps you get those top candidates, but helps you get rid of some of those unqualified ones that are coming through. Um, then what you want to do is note the three to five non-negotiable skills and qualifications. So that's, you know, if you really want somebody with a college degree and that's non-negotiable, put that in the in the non-negotiable skills and qualifications section. Um, if you want somebody with 10 to 15 years of experience, put that there. And then perhaps followed by a more nice to have list, so desired qualifications. Um, you know, we prefer it if you, um, let's say, know how to use a certain kind of software, or you type a certain number of words per minute, or you have experience um, with government selling or something like that. Um, you know, things that aren't really non-negotiable but are just desired skills to have. Make sure you separate those out so that people that at least fit those non-negotiable skills and qualifications will know that they can still apply um, and that hopefully their transferable skill set will hit those nice to have. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about here is compensation. Um, I'm seeing a growing trend these days. People are not putting a lot of compensation information in their job postings. Um, and this is actually going to be a really important aspect for top job seekers who don't really want to waste their time applying and interviewing for positions which are outside of their salary requirements. So it's highly recommended that you at least provide a range. So, you know, somewhere between, it can be a large range too. I've seen people say between fifty and $100,000. So with the range, what you're able to do is you know, show the top prospects that your position is competitive. Um, that being said, if you are sensitive about sharing this information up front, you should at least mention in the job posting that the salary is dependent upon experience and that it's competitive. So you do want to mention something about it, even if it's very vague, just so that your top job seekers understand that, that you're willing to negotiate on that for the right fit. Um, another pretty basic one here is location. So um, here in the Bay Area, what I end up seeing, because it's a pretty large metro area, a lot of people are putting their jobs in the San Francisco Bay Area location, uh, which I'm not recommending if you're trying to get these top job seekers as well. Um, many cities in the area can be about two hours away from, another, from each other, and the top job seekers really want to consider moving or uh, commuting somewhere that's up to two hours away. So by leaving this information vague and including a metro area instead of the actual location, um, some job seekers are actually going to try to find your location, but some others aren't even going to bother. You know, if, if you just list a, a general area um, and they can't find your location right away, let's say on your LinkedIn page or your website, um, you know, sometimes they might just give up. Um, other people are probably just applying without knowing where your location is, and that's probably another cause of unqualified job seekers, you know, um, and not necessarily unqualified, but people that would never actually take the position not knowing that you're located so far away. So again here, you want to think like a top job seeker, and you want to make it easy for them to decide to apply at your company, and putting location is a big part of that. Um, if you have multiple locations that the person will be working out of, make sure you include that. Um, or if you're hiring for the same position in multiple locations, make sure that you, know, you might say there's some flexibility, um, but at the same time you want to make sure that you're posting those positions as separate job posts as well. Um, in the location section, you'll also want to include if the, person, if the position will work in the multiple locations like I mentioned, 
or if they're going to be traveling frequently and how often that is. And these are all important things that people consider because um, when people are looking at your job posting, they're really looking at the whole picture. They're trying to decide, is this somewhere that I would actually want to work? And if it's not, those top job seekers aren't going to apply. Um, so if you want to make sure that you're appealing to them, you know, these are all really important factors to include into your job postings to make sure that you're appealing to those candidates in the right way. Um, the last step, and one that I see uh, kind of removed quite a bit, is the call to action. Um, so I'm in marketing. The call to action is you know, the, the holy grail of marketing. If you don't have a call to action, um, you, know, you, you pretty much have failed in whatever you've done because you're not telling people what to do next. So for example, everybody on this webinar, the next thing I want you to do <laughs> is to go and sign up for a free trial at Bright. So I'm giving you the next steps and saying, you know, this is, this is what I'd like you to do after this. Um, and the same holds true with your job posting. So when you post a job, you want to tell your job seekers what, what your desired next step is for them. You know, what's the purpose of your job posting? It's to apply to our job. So you want to tell them, you know, apply with the button below. Go to our website, www.myjobsite.com, and apply here. Um, this is a simple step, but a lot of people often forget to include it. Um, but if you do tell people what the next steps are and what they should be doing next, you'll have a lot more people apply. Um, so this is a, those are the top steps for the job postings here. Um, but what I did want to mention before moving on to the Bright.com portion is that it doesn't end with the job posting. So if you want qualified candidates applying to your company, you know, the job posting is kind of step one, but you also need to take into consideration your application process as well as your candidate experience. So while it's not really the topic of this webinar, just make sure that you're um, not having candidates apply through a tedious application process, you're going to lose a lot of people that you gained from such a great job posting. Um, some employers argue that difficult application process will help weed out a lot of job seekers, but what they don't really realize is that it's the most qualified candidates that they lose. So if you don't have to ask for a ton of information, it's better. Um, probably just ask for a resume, a short cover letter, and it be a few easy to answer qualification questions. Because um, every additional field you have somebody fill out, you'll lose prospects. So in marketing, um, the, the general rule of thumb is that each additional field, you'll lose 10% of your prospects. Um, so if you're losing 10% of your top candidates with every, actual, you know, with every additional field, you might want to think twice about what information you're actually um, making them include. And then after the application process is over, you want to make sure that your candidate experience helps solidify your employment brand. So you don't want to have this great experience up until the point that the resume is submitted and then have the candidate just kind of hanging on for what happens next. Um, the top candidates especially are going to find jobs a lot more quickly than those unqualified ones. So you'll have to move quickly with them. And um, that's part of the great candidate experience is making sure that you send an email out upon resume submission, that you let them know the time frame that you'll be following up with them on, and that you actually follow up within that time frame. So that's all really important stuff to make sure you're doing um, to actually get your qualified candidates um, to come and interview with you and essentially you know, to, to be hired in the future. So we're going ahead and move over now. I'm going to show you Bright.com. Um, I want to start by showing you the job seeker portion. So when I log into Bright.com as a job seeker, this is what I see. I've uploaded my, uh, my resume already, so I'm getting scored for each of the positions that are currently available. So when we were talking about doing job titles appropriately earlier, you can see up here that as a top job seeker, a top candidate, I'm going in and I'm searching for something really specific. I'm looking for marketing director positions. And the positions that come up here, sports marketing director, director of marketing, product marketing director, director of internet marketing. So the titles do vary a little bit, but they all include the words marketing and director. So you can see from, from these results here that 
you know, those weird titles like marketing guru and whatnot are not going to show up, and those top prospects are never going to look at them. So I'll go ahead and click into one of these just to see, you know, a good, a good example of a solid job posting. So they have a really basic title here. They have a pretty great introductory paragraph. So they're asking, do you want to help define the next generation of customer experience? You know, they're kind of getting you excited about the position. Um, right after that, they're kind of giving you a, a quick recap of what the position will look like. And then they go into the responsibilities a little bit, and they have their call to action. Um, the thing that they are missing here is their compensation, actually. I, I don't see that in my quick scan. Um, and they don't have a lot of benefits listed, so they don't really do a great job of explaining why I should want to work here over everybody else that's listed. Um, but, you know, they've done a pretty good job overall of explaining what the position is all about, explaining what the qualifications are, and giving me a pretty good idea if I'd be a good fit for this position or not. So what I'm going to do now is show you the employer center. Um, this will just take a couple of minutes. We'll make sure we get everybody out of here by 1130. Um, so when you log into the employer center, you'll see your jobs. These are the current jobs that we have listed. It shows me how many people have applied, how many prospects I have. So this is people that have not applied but that are highly qualified for the position based on their score. And then how many views I have. And over here in the parentheses, I can see that I have 121 new. So I go ahead and click into this. I can see all of the candidates that are a good fit for this position. And it ranks everybody by score. It shows me the 70s and above for all of my prospects. And it shows you all of the scores for people that have applied. So, you know, kind of, you know, the side effect of having these really great job postings is that some people that aren't really qualified are going to think that you're a really cool company and it doesn't hurt to apply there, so they're going to apply anyway. And a tool like this is going to help you weed those people out because you can sort by the score and you can see really who are the best matches for you. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you how to post a new job here. I'm going to just do it from an edit, though. Um, that way I'm not messing up our site. This is actually how we do 100% of our recruiting. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, edit the posting. Just pretend like I'm creating a new one. Um, so like I said, you want to put in a great title, just pretty basic, explains the job, is searchable, and that you know, basically is understandable by the top candidates so that they'll click on your job and at least read your description and hopefully apply for your position. Um, if you have a location, you'll want to always put that in. Um, so the one main location is the best thing to do here. Um, like I said, make sure that it's very general, I mean very specific, and not a general metro area. Um, choose category employment type. This is all pretty basic. Um, here in the company information is where you'll want to put that opening paragraph we talked about. So this is where you want to say, uh, for example, here, do you have a passion for recruiting? This is who we are, this is what we're looking for, um, and this is the impact that you can have. Um, this is a really great place to put in some benefits as well. So it looks like even we have a little bit of room to grow. Um, but overall, you know, I feel like this, this uh, opening paragraph here really kind of draws you in and then gets you to read that down to the description. So, you know, we have a couple of the, the performance based descriptions here, um, as well as some desired qualifications, and we have this call to action. So if you want to help us improve how recruiting is done, we want to hear from you. Apply today. Um, the call to action button will also be at the bottom that says to apply now. Uh, we've included our compensation information, um, as well as a link down here about um, some of you know, our, our culture and our mission and our branding. So that people can go to our website and see why Bright is such a great place to work. And these are all super important things for getting those top candidates. Um, a lot of companies these days are going through and creating an entire career site for themselves where they talk about their benefits, they talk about their culture, they talk about what their employees love about working there. And all of those things get those top prospects to apply to your company. Um, once we save these requirements here, we get taken to a new page. Um, and what this is is our job confirmation page so that you as a recruiter can go in 
Um, we parse those skills from this job description and we put some of those keywords in here and you say how important they are to you. Um, so whereas the, the normal job description will have the text here that's largely meant for, right over here, that's largely meant for the job seekers, what you're doing here is you're telling our algorithm what's the most important to you. So which skills are required, which are desired, and which is just kind of nice to have. Um, and what this does is it helps you really find those top candidates that are the most important to you. So, you know, normally a, a matching algorithm can't really tell the difference between all of the different keywords in here, but what we're able to do is not only match on keywords, but um, match on the keywords that are most important to you, their synonyms, um, thousands of other criteria that include, you know, school rankings, um, if the company that they've worked for is a competitor of yours, um, you know, how well their background matches, what their um, length of employment is, what their gaps in their employment looks like. You can see all of these things um, as a recruiter and what we're trying to do is make all that process available to you through Bright.com so you don't have to go through that entire process yourself. Um, we just surface the best candidates already for you. So that is it for the presentation today. Thank you all so much for joining. Um, does anybody have any questions? Go ahead and see. Questions today. Um, yes, the, uh, somebody asked, will the webinar be available after the session for download? Yes, absolutely. Um, we will be sending this out to everybody following the presentation. Um, I'll go ahead and send an email to everybody that attended. And uh, I will send the handouts as well. Thank you for asking, Marilyn. Um, I'll go ahead and just email those to everybody afterward. Um, it looks like we had some freezing slides here. I apologize for that. Um, yeah, we had a lot of questions about the, the presentation. It will be available. I will send that to everybody. Um, it's possible that we'll do this webinar again sometime. So thank you again so much for joining us. And we would love it if you went to bright.com, signed up for a free 30-day trial. It's always free to post jobs on Bright. Um, it's free to review resumes. And you just pay to unlock the contact information. So if you want to go ahead and sign up for that, um, you go to bright.com slash register slash employer. Um, feel free to connect with us online as well. And thank you so much, everybody, for joining us.